Great. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. May force be with you. Uh, and my primary mission today is to talk about diagrams. And uh, thank you for inviting me to talk about it. And um, thank you, my employer, Sci5, to send me here and pay me as a trip. Uh, how many of you heard this before? <laughs> and we don't do that, right? So I, I like the one. This one is more. It's from Alice in Wonderland. And it says uh, that what's, what's the use to the book with our pictures and conversations? And uh, Lewis Carroll was a mathematician, yet uh, he appreciated the idea of pictures in the books. And we will have, today we will we'll have conversation about pictures in uh, technical books. Uh, a lot of scientists of the past, and great scientists uh, were engineers, and a lot of great engineers were also doodlers. What does it mean? You, you probably remember this guy. He did a lot of doodles on his notebooks, and a piece of paper from he, with his doodles cost the millions. <laughs> and he was an artist as well, so he can doodle something very artistic. And, uh, and uh, we look at these diagrams from Leonardo and trying to figure out what he meant and he, his thinking process through. That's another doodler. Uh, you might know him. Uh, he's a scientist. Yet he invented diagrams uh, named after him, like Feynman diagram. And that's another doodler. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, anybody know this one? Analytical Sorry? Analytical yes, it's uh, Charles Babbage analytical engine. And it's very schematic in the sense of um, there are little mechanical details yet connectivity what matters and do you know this one actually it's diagram of pre previous one so this one it's mechanical view and this one is diagrammatic view Charles Babbage invented first hardware description language and that's how it looked back in 18th century like 19th century I, I don't know, a long time ago and he wrote a book about hardware description languages. And that's how it looked, because there was no computers. So he ha had to draw these diagrams by hand. Yet, without this diagram, he cannot think about what he was doing. He, he used it as a way of thinking. And many engineers and scientists think about and reason about what they're doing by drawing diagrams. And what is diagram? So. I used my favorite med medium, which is uh, Wikipedia. And it says, symbolic representation of information according to the visualization technique. It's very concise. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, diagrams. Uh, first, some generic diagrams. And you can tell it's generic when you look at it and you have no idea what it, uh, from what field of study it is. It may be statistics, it may be politics, it may be you know, rocket science, and you don't know. It's plots, charts, histograms, and uh, whatever, st uh, whatever, whatever data you have, you just throw on it and you get this generic diagram. You may also discover more domain-specific diagrams, and you can tell by looking at it and say, oh, that looks like chemistry. I don't know much about chemistry, but looking at it, I get an idea. And the middle one looked like quantum physics, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> and again, you look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's Feynman diagram. Um, there are particles somewhere. 
and time goes up for some reason, fine. And on the right, you have mechanical assembly diagram. It's very intuitive to me. So if you buy something in IKEA and you need to assemble it, you have to assemble that type of diagram, uh, or understand this type of diagram. So there are hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of types of diagrams everywhere. And people even developed visual languages to describe to, to use diagrams as a language. Uh, there were multiple attempts to standardize these languages. And UML, one of those, and Russia had Dragon language, which is fully diagram language. And they, they even programmed this uh, Buran program, which was space shuttle of Soviet Union, in, in diagrams only. And it was amazing. Uh, because anybody can verify what's going into computer by just looking through diagrams. I don't know how they did it. Uh, but UML, uh, back to UML. It's interesting attempt to, 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 to bring some structure to diagrams more than just doodles. So when you look at these diagrams, you basically uh, have multiple types of diagrams in UML, and some of them bring sequentiality and interaction and structure and behavior to of a system, uh, no matter what system it is. It may be applicable to a social system. It may be applicable for electronic system. It's, it's the same diagram. I guess mostly this attempt failed. I don't know. Anybody using a UML? Okay, it's failed. <laughs> Yet, we, we learned a little bit from it, and we start using it plurally, right? So th this diagram on the left, which is sequence diagram, I, I've seen many diagrams like that in our documentation. Yet, it's a little bit not UML. So any diagram I, I've seen in our documentation, entire link spec, has these arrows tilted a little bit, and it's not allowed in UML, okay? <laughs> so people take some visual notion of some standard and, oh, I get it, and start drawing doodles, right? Which is okay. Uh, nobody here to judge you for doodles. And according to Wikipedia, uh, main properties of diagram to be simplified version of something, right? So this is very, f another famous diagram, anybody know? this diagram, it's called penguin diagram, uh, and apparently it's nothing to do with penguins. It's actually Feynman diagram about quantum physics, and John Ellis were drunk playing in a pub, betting that he can put the word penguin in his next scientific paper about quantum mechanics. <laughs> and he need to get way drunk to figure out how to do that. And he figured out if he draws this diagram a little bit like tilted differently, it looked like penguin. So he called it penguin diagram. And apparently it's a very popular class of Feynman diagrams in uh, quantum physics. So it, it does mean that it schematically reproduce a picture of penguin, yet it's very simplistic view of things diagram. It's very diagrammatic. and um, So uh, let's talk about our business. Forget about penguins. Uh, we are, who is doing data sheets, specifications, manuals for your protocols? Good. Two, three, five. Okay, we have to do more. Okay? We, we are lacking on documentation on all fronts. Okay? I would prefer you start with documentation before you touch RTL. Okay? So let's look at uh, some great data sheets of the past. That's that one from Wikipedia. And typical data sheet will have some text, uh, and then it will have some diagrams, right? What kind of diagrams we have in uh, electronic data sheets? OK, that that's may look familiar, um, like memory mapping and block diagrams. How many of you did such diagrams? Good. So you'll probably use some, some sort of Visio 
to draw it, and you probably struggled with these arrows going, you know, nicely and having the same widths everywhere. Okay, this is uh, another one, which is uh, registers and fields, and uh, that's pretty popular. And of course, some time in diagrams, if you go that low in the details. And uh, the diagrams may be more complex. It may be pretty complicated. And it's hard to judge somebody drawing this diagram um, because it kind of explains the story, right? So it's like multiple tables, adding address, and it's very explanatory. Yet it's complex diagram, composition of multiple smaller diagrams, and so on. Uh, and of course, there are some logic uh, schematics, um, uh, circuit diagrams, which is were well, very important when I started because that was the only way to explain to machine what you want. You, you, you go to to some cadence tool and you draw these gates, drop gates, and connect the wires. Sense got for very long, um, yet this diagram, uh, this logic schematics uh, circuit. Uh, diagrams is still very close to my heart, and I understand more from this than from Verilog. So I would write Verilog, yet I would look at this as a diagram. And yeah, there were times where where computers were rooms with equipment, and uh, data sheets included these layout diagrams with equipment being placed in a room. That's computer. Recognize the computer. It's all room is one computer, right? And it required girls actually to operate it, so that's important. Now we shrunk, right? So we, we still use some diagrams of the packages. Um, and it's mechanical diagram. It's actually nothing to do with electronics, yet it's on our data sheet or our specification for some reason. So uh, when you do your, your sp specifications and uh, uh, your data sheets. What kind of diagrams you should use? One of architect, uh, architects I worked with told me that he can do all specifications th that he will produce all architectural specifications just using text and tables. He said, I will use zero diagrams. And uh, he was right. It was like hundreds and hundreds of tables. And tables are OK. I think tables are okay um, if they're simple. If they get more complicated, God no, it's it's not. It, it's it's very difficult medium table. And um, after after being um, a thousand cell, it's unreadable. You can use generic diagrams that we we discussed before, like plots, um, graphs, and some other generic diagrams. That's fine as long as it explains what you want to convey. You can also use adjacent domain specific diagrams, which is like mechanical drawings and um, uh, flow charts, which doesn't belong to our field, it belongs to system design field. And when you exhausted all these capabilities, you should probably go to and do some domain specific diagrams that we, uh, we've seen before. Now about diagramming tools, uh, and we have few Ways, a few schools of thought. Okay, what's that? <laughs> okay, that's that's annoying. Sorry. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. So uh, these days we use a few tools to do diagrams. And first, you start probably with some favorite freehand drawing tool. I don't know, it's uh, Illustrator, Coral Draw, I don't know, Inkscape. I use Inkscape a lot. It's open source. And you start drawing boxes and lines, and at some point you need to be artist to, to, to accomplish a task. And I'm not good at drawing by hand. I'm very OCD. I, I, I picky about, oh, is, is it like good distance? Is it good spacing? It's like I, I have t trouble with drawing by hand. Some people use a templated drawing uh, like Visio or Lucidchart where tool allow you to 
do a specific type of diagram and it's kind of allow you to use connectors to, on the boxes to and lines go vertical and horizontal only. They don't go, go tilted if you don't like. There's nice arrows and so on. I say, this is a holy grail. So now I can do any diagram. And Visio was very big at many places I worked, and it was like standard for all diagrams. <coughs> and some people like spreadsheet plots. And you drop a data in the spreadsheet, and you say, oh, yeah, give me this line chart of the data I want. A spreadsheet can can represent any of this, and um, why not? All, all applicable. And there are some CAD drawing tools if you want mechanical drawing specifically yeah. for schematics. There are some dedicated tools, but 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 in many cases you can generate this from description from from machine readable machine readable description. And a good good uh, generative diagrams um, started all started with latex because LaTeX had this way to program anything you want inside your document. And there is the TICK-Z package, which has a lot of diagrams. So you just describe what, what kind of diagram you want and put some description of this diagram and it renders. Uh, there is several other uh, diagramming languages and, to, and gener generative diagrams um, frameworks. But Walt is heading towards some HTML, SVG, JavaScript, CSS kind of direction. And D3 and WaveDrome is some, something to try. Um, and what about diagram being executable? So if you draw it in uh, Inkscape and, or Visio, most probably just picture, nothing else. So a computer cannot reason about it. How about you do diagram so if you describe diagram in some textual form, uh, you can generate diagram, yet computer can look at the same form and same language and reason about it. So it say, oh yeah, I, I get it. This is, this is block diagram, so it's blocks connected somehow. Or other way around, I've seen it too. So you do visual diagram, and then you run some script, and they extract connectivity from visual diagram or something, right? So you can go both directions, um, and you can make it executable. It means computer can look at, at your diagram uh, together with you, and changes in diagram it actually affect affect um, both behavior and picture. Graphics uh, invented new language. Uh, it's called Dot, which allow you uh, to describe some graphs. And I, I like it. It's very simple and uh, very useful if you want some kind of spatial properties inside diagram. Uh, PlantUML has own language um, which allow you to do different diagrams, including like sequence diagrams, but it's special language. So instead of reinventing language again and again, uh, which kind of a waste of time, uh, some people start using standard languages, XML and JSON these days, is it like FAT-free XML or something? And yeah, so I, I'm also of this tool, which uh, you might use, to, if not, try it. Um, you put some JSON description, and tool will render you a diagram, uh, which is, uh, you know, easy to start using, which is go online and start using. Uh, you don't need to install anything. And you can also do uh, register description diagrams from it, Just just put put some description uh, in JSON, and you, you immediately see result. So th in that sense, uh, about a little bit about style of diagrams. It's my opinion. It's, it's not a, a, sty a style book from some famous author. But you will probably want some consistency in your document. So you don't want, if you, your document has 100 diagrams, uh, you don't want it that, look, that somebody look at this document and say, Oh, the, those ten, ten first diagrams were drawn by a specialist en engineer who know what he was doing. Next one was drawn by intern copying what the first ten was doing and, and changing it. And the rest w was just experimental art with colors and, and forms uh, by somebody else coming you know, and doing it. So you want some consistency. Consistency is a key. 
you want fonts, lines, colors, match up fonts, lines, and colors, and an old document, and text, and tables. Y you probably want to stick to the grid. Uh, how many of you use a gridded paper, like squared paper? Yes, it, that's my favorite type of paper, too. Um, because I, when you draw on, on such paper, you have some, some uh, idea about grid, virtual grid on which you, you operate. And you want it responsive, and responsive is a big thing in, in web design these days. Um, when you look at the, on your phone, it's vertical, you want everything to be in one column. If you tilt it in port, uh, landscape mode, it should, should change somehow, and diagram still still, still good, and uh, text is still good. And if you look at the big screen, it should should put multiple columns and put the diagram. So you want diagrams to be respons uh, responsible, uh, responsive, and it's not easy. So about mediums, uh, it used to be that that um, in order put to put your diagrams, you need to ask your sysadmin to in your docu wiki to put some plugin that will understand your, you know diagrams uh, in, in the text and run this JavaScript. Um, and my favorite medium these days is observable HQ, which is an uh, interesting way of uh, with going about documents. And um, so all this particular presentation is done in observable HQ, actually. So, and you go, go it's like Jupyter Notebook, but it's it's only web. You don't have any um, you don't have any server running. So everything done in your book. And when you uh, when you do diagram, you just where is di where is diagram diagram. So you, you just put the source code here, and it renders in the page. Right. So you don't need to ask your sysadmin to install the plugin. Thank you. Uh, questions. Do we have any questions? Yep. John. So I'd like to use uh, more schematics and block diagrams. What sort of open source tools are available for amateurs? Yeah, so, so uh, most of, it depends on what kind of diagram you, you want to use, right? So Inkscape is a great starter if you just want to draw some diagram. It's, it's generate SVG. SVG is very portable across multiple mediums. If you want to generate diagrams, <coughs> my favorite medium is JavaScript and uh, SVG. So I, I just go to observable HQ and uh, start, uh, start writing some uh, uh, JavaScript to generate this SVG. It turned out to be uh, Pretty easy. WaveDrum. When when I developed WaveDrum, uh, it was new, and there was no uh, no mediums like Observable where you can start writing JavaScript. You don't need like s somebody to install plugin. These days is super easy. Uh, I I have a bunch of diagrams uh, in my collection. You can go on my um, Observable collection and. Actually, observable itself it has a lot of a lot of uh, examples of diagrams um, that that can be used, and I, I would recommend that this one if you if you want programmatically generate diagra diagrams. Let's see how long this sucker can go? Oh, it's still going. Yes. <laughs> This is kind of in response to that other question. I would highly recommend draw.io. Just type it in your browser window. I've completely, I never go to Visio anymore. It's open, it imports SVG. It's uh, very useful. And you can uh, import, you can actually uh, store libraries in GitHub and it'll, it'll draw, pull them straight from there. So it's very open for sharing libraries and stuff too. Any other questions? 
No, I, I personally use WaveDrum all the time. It is fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Alexi. It's, sure. it's the best. I can't think of anything else I'd want to do timing diagrams in. So, sure. good on you. All right, thank you.